morning ladies and gentlemen Berto warrior here hope you guys are having a super awesome uh, preparation day today's Friday is preparation day uh, for most people that celebrate the Sabbath uh, like I state before the Sabbath is uh, sundown Friday and it's about 802 here until sundown on Saturday so that's a 24 hour cycle so when we talked about preparation day like right now uh, most people are getting, if they're not at work, they're getting ready. Uh, you know, the house is clean. They got their clothes that they're going to wear tomorrow. Uh, they got their husband's shoes polished, you know, different things like that. Or they already have the clothes ironed, okay? So there's different things that we do to get ourselves ready. But the most important thing that we get ready is our heart. We get our heart ready uh, to receive um, whatever God has for us tomorrow. But we know that you know he always has something for us every day but tomorrow is the sabbath and it's a special day uh, for most seventh day adventists so seven day adventists looking uh, uh forward to the coming of jesus okay and we call ourselves seventh day adventists because we believe in the bible sabbath the bible sabbath so what time it is it is time for us to get ready for jesus coming so we need to be studying our bibles we need to be studying our bibles and so if you look today, the topic is wage. So we still are in the help in daily living and it's the uh, Ministry of Healing book. And this is the other topic. And I believe we have one more topic uh, covering in daily, uh, help in daily living. We have one more part to do after today, okay? So um, let, us, let us get ready for our um, talk today. I'm trying to get my, my camera situated here. It's not very straight. Okay, maybe that's a little bit better. Okay, so let's let's um, have a word of prayer. Let me put that down. They're kind of gracious, and Father, I thank you for this beautiful day, Father, for being out in nature, Father, to being in the country and to hear uh, the different uh, birds are singing and the different um, traffic that's going by. I just thank you, Father, for my sister, for my brother. Be with them, Father. Bless them and give them a, a great day today in your son's name. Amen. Amen. Okay, so uh, yesterday we talked about, let me go back yesterday. Uh, so for those of you that may be um, not, not aware that I'm doing like a series. So yesterday was plans for the future, plans for the future. And so you might go ahead on my Facebook page right now and it's, it's there, okay? It's, I believe it's very short. I think it's like maybe 16 minutes or so. So today is wage. It says, when Christ called his disciples to follow him, he offered them no flattering prospect in this life. He gave them no promise of gain or worldly honor, nor did they make any stipulation as to what they should receive. To Matthew, as he sat at the receipt of customer, the Savior said, follow me. And he left all, he rose up and followed him. And you can find that in Luke 5, 27 and 28. Matthew did not, before rendering service, wait to demand a certain salary equal to the amount received in his former occupation. Without question or hesitation, he followed Jesus. It was enough for him that he was to be with the Savior, that he might hear his word and unite with him in his work. So it was with the disciples previously called. When Jesus bid Peter and his companions follow him, immediately they left their boat and their nest and their net. Some of these disciples had friends dependent upon them for support. But when they received the Savior's invitation, they did not hesitate and inquired, how shall I live and sustain my family? They were obedient to the call and went after, afterwards Jesus asked them, when I sent you without purse or scrip or shoes, lack e anything, they could answer nothing. Okay, and then you can you can find this uh, in Luke twenty two and uh, thirty five. So Luke chapter twenty two verses thirty five. So today the Savior called us as He called Matthew and John and Peter to His work. 
if our hearts are touched by his love, the question of compensation will not be up uppermost in our mind. We shall rejoice to be core workers with Christ, as he shall not Okay, let me go back. Let me go back. We shall rejoice to be co-workers with God. If Okay, let me go back. I don't know what's going on here. We shall rejoice to be co-workers with Christ, and we shall not fear to trust his care. If we make God our strength, we shall have clear receptions, respect, reception. Okay, let me go back. Go on. Please prescriptions, prescription of duty, unselfish aspiration, our life will be accurate by a noble purpose which which will raise us above solid motive or selfish motive. So as we follow Jesus Christ as as uh, state, we don't thinking about okay how am I going to get paid or where's the money coming from we know that God owns everything right so if we know that God's own everything we're not looking for compensation for when we go about doing his work we know he's going to provide for our needs and like I stated before since we are living in the last day we as um, believers we will have to be able to rely totally on Jesus like um, e Elijah did okay how many how many years he went and remember the the bird the raven came and fed him and then from there when the brook dried up he went over to the the widow woman remember so God will provide for us just like He did with Elijah just like He did with the um, with the disciples so we have to be able to say Lord whatever your will God will make a way He owns everything can you imagine He owns everything so when we're thinking about I need to get compensation for whatever it is you know whether you're going to visit someone or whether they tell you to take food to someone you're not looking for compensation you're doing it out of love out of love and God will uh, he will com uh, compensate you he will compensate you so we just need to rely totally on him because if you think about what's about to happen we won't be able to those people that are true to God and decided to keep the Sabbath the seven day Sabbath according to uh, Exodus 20 if we decided to keep God's commandment as, as uh, prescribed in the Bible we will be able we are not going to be able to work because we're going to get the seal of God and we're going to be persecuted but those people that decided to uh, to go against God and decided to go with because they are forced into worship on, on Sunday if they decide to continue in that practices once the Sunday law um, comes um, comes into um, when, it, when it becomes a law Okay, if they continue to do that, they're going to get the mark of the beast. It's not a literal mark. It's just meaning that you gave in your mind allegiance to, to go against God. And so then you're going to get the mark of the beast. And then you're going to get a, a mark on your hands as well. So, you know, so then you got two different things going on here. So are we going to be um, able to stand? And if we're not standing now and saying for the small things, you know, somebody might, the bill might be due right now and they're crying, well, how am I going to pay this? Sister, my brother, sister, my brother, go to God and pray and ask him, Lord, send me the, the funds. And God, before you even pray, God, sometimes he's already provided. You know, it might be a delay because maybe the mailman is, is gotten got there or maybe the mail went to the wrong address but whatever it is God has a way to bless us I mean abundantly more than we can ask or think I mean when I mean I'm moving up here in the country you know leaving a job and leaving corporate America I'm thinking you know it's been over 16 years I've been at home and I'm so thankful that God has given me a husband that know the responsibility of a man uh, that give him the strength to go out there and uh, provide for our family. 
But I mean, you know, but even with that, you know, we still will have to be total dependent on God, total dependent on God. Even if you're working, you got to get to the point of total dependence on God, because even if you work, you know, sometimes the check is not enough, right? So we have to be able to say, I want to trust God with everything, with everything, everything we need to trust him. And here's the song. It says, come uh, labor on. And it goes like this. Come labor on. Who dare stand idle on the harvest plain while all around him wave the golden grain and to each servants does the master say, go work today. Come laborer on, claim the high calling. Angels cannot share. To young and old the gospel glad gladly bear. Redeem the time, it's ours too swiftly flies. The night draw nigh. Come labor on, no time to rest till the glows the western sky till the long shadows over our pathway lies, a glad sound comes with the setting sun. Well done, well done. Isn't that beautiful? Isn't that beautiful? That is the word we want to hear Jesus when he comes um, the second time. And he, remember I said he will not touch this earth. Jesus is going to be coming in the air. So if somebody say, oh, Jesus is over here. Or Jesus, you know that it's not him. Jesus is going to come in the air. Okay, he will not touch this earth. Okay, when the second time, he will not touch the earth. So everybody, the dead in Christ goes up, rise from the grave, and they go up to meet him. And then those who are alive will go up to meet him in the clouds, right? And then you go off for a thousand years, and people going over the books and see why maybe sister didn't make it, or you know, you know, different people didn't make it into heaven. But we'll be there for a thousand years. Then after the thousand years, and then the New Jerusalem coming back, and then that's when Satan and his evil angels, or everybody, will be all awakened coming to attack the city, New Jerusalem. So when people talking about, you know, um, having uh, the, the Israel in, 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 um, in, uh, in this world, they're going have Jerusalem, and there's all this stuff going about Jerusalem. People are mistaken. That's not the Jerusalem that God is talking about. God has his own Jerusalem that he's coming, that he, that he will be returning that, but it won't be the second time, will be after the thousand years. So study your Bibles, my sister, my brother. There's so many great information in there. I don't want to get into more details about what's going to happen with Satan and within the thousand years while the saints are, are up there in heaven. But you go study your Bibles. I mean, it's beautiful information there. It's a lot of stuff. Whatever problems we have today, we can have the answer in the Bible. Isn't that amazing? So thank you guys for listening. And um, I wish you guys a, a happy Sabbath to my family and my friends. And just think about it, my, my brother, my sister. We're going to be celebrating the Sabbath from this point until eternity. The Sabbath will never end. That's just what God has, has, has done for us. Isn't it amazing? It's amazing. Let us close with prayer. That kind of gracious Son and Father, I thank you for my brothers and my sister that has stopped by and those who will stop by in the future, Father. Allow them, Father, to surrender their will to you so you can mold us and shape us uh, and so we can finish this work. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. So my brother, my sister, like I said, you know, just go have a great day and have um, a happy Sabbath and have a great weekend. Until uh, next week, we'll cover God will provide. That will be on Monday. God will provide. Talk to you guys then. Take care.